Hi everybody, we're going to get your composition ready for your deconstruction project. So the first thing you'll need to do is download this grid guideline, which can be found on the slides. All right, so I've got that downloaded and it's popping up here on my downloads bar. The next thing I need to do is find an animal picture that I like. So, spoiler alert, it's going to look something like this. When we're finding a good animal picture, we want to look for something that's really close up on the face, and we want to find something where um, it is somewhat interesting in every third of the page. So these white lines are the thirds, so there's a lot of good stuff happening in the center here, but I can still see the edge of his ear and his face here on the other thirds. The only animals I have found that are really difficult to work with are birds. There are some hawks you could zoom in on that still look okay, um, but most bird pictures don't work very well. So if you are an art novice, you might want to do something like this, some sort of domestic animal like a dog or a cat. Um, they have really recognizable features. If you are more of the intermediate level, you might want to look for something a little bit more exotic, um, maybe even like a, like you can see my examples over here on the left, um, like a snake, reptile, or something, or a wild animal. And then if you are a little bit more advanced and you're looking for more of a challenge, you should download your own picture. Take a picture of a pet or, um, I don't know, maybe you have a zoo picture on your phone or something. But um, you could also work from a picture that you took, which would just make it that much more um, interesting and unique to you. So I'm gonna do a quick Google search for a llama. And so the best pictures are the ones where the animal's looking straight at us. Actually, this is great. It's looking straight at us and it has some interesting features. I'm eventually going to crop in on this a little bit more, but I like what I've got here. Here's what's not a good picture. This or the animal is turned to the side because you're not gonna have an interesting third of the page over here. So symmetrical as much as you can, at least with the animal looking, all oh, this is adorable, <laughs> with the animal looking straight at you. And when you're choosing a good photograph to work from, you wanna look for something that has a lot of pixels. Um, so this one's 800 by 600, that's pretty good. Um, oh, look at this big hairy guy. Oh, that's, you know, both of these dimensions are in the thousands. That's even better. I think I have to go with this one. So I'm going to right click on it. If you're using a Chromebook, remember that's just a two finger click. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this image. <clears throat> then I'm going to go to Canva. I'm going to create a design. Maybe. Yeah, create a design with custom dimensions. Um, if yours doesn't already pop up like this, you want it to be nine inches by six inches. So remember to change this down here on the right first to inches, nine by six. So let's create a new design. First thing we need to do is upload two items. We need to upload the picture that we just took, which if you still have your um, download bar up here, you can always just drag these pictures into the uploads. So I've got my llama picture. I also need to download or upload, sorry, my grid guideline. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is manipulate or move around this llama picture. This one is already zoomed in really far, so I don't have to do very much. But I'm going to make sure that I have the ability to freely move it, which, let me go ahead and undo this. Um, sometimes when you drag pictures over from your uploads, over here, you may have noticed that it just sort of snaps it all the way to the back. That may not be what you want because if you are using something like this, where you're gonna have to do a lot of editing to get it like um, 
zoomed in a little bit more on the animal's face, it's hard to work with it when it snaps it to the background. So to fix that, you want to make sure that you move it fast to the center here and then crop your image in a little bit more so it's tighter on the animal's face. There we go. You hit enter. And now I can take this part and just drag it to fill up my space. That's a lot better. Okay. So many llama pictures. The next thing I'm going to do is edit this picture so it's black and white. I know that seems silly because this one already is black and white, so I'm going to go ahead and actually work with this hairy guy so you can see the difference. This looks like the llama version of my guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to adjust. I'm sorry, actually, I want to go to filter first. The easiest way to get a good image to work from is to use the filter down here, either grayscale or street. Makes it really um, contrasty. That's kind of dark though, so I'm going to try grayscale. Ah, that works a lot better for me. Um, however, I think I am still going to adjust the contrast a little bit more. So you can change the filter to either grayscale or street, then go over to adjust and you can play around the brightness and the contrast. And you want a nice range of values, light lights, dark darks, and some middle grays in between. And I'm getting that with this. So I'm happy with that. The last thing we want to do is put this grid that we uploaded. Um, again, we don't want it to snap to the background. But this grid, we're going to position it in the corner drag the opposite corner to fill up the space. And now these white lines are going to be our guidelines for each third of the page um, because we're going to treat each third differently. The red lines are here just as drawing guidelines. And I'll explain that a little bit more later on. So once you're happy with your animal and you have some interesting things happening in each third of the page, you don't basically you don't want a whole third that just looks like the background if that's what your picture looks like you want to blow it up even more um, so once you have something going on in every third of your page you can go ahead and download a png file that way we just make sure we can work straight from that picture okay there are three ways you can set up your page First, you can simply trace the contour lines, which are like the outlines of every feature. Or if you want to just trace the basic shapes and fill in the details yourself, you could do that. Or if you wish to measure the third lines um, and then do the entire drawing freehand, you can do that. So we're going to find your file of your Canva composition that you downloaded. I find it's easiest to open that up in the files on your Chromebook. And you'll notice it's kind of finicky, but you're going to place your paper on top of your Chromebook, sort of like you did with your last project, and zoom in and out until the edges, the left and the right edge, are touching the left and the right edge of your paper. Okay, so you'll notice that I still need to zoom in a little bit more because I had a little space there on the right. So now I have it so it fits perfectly and I can see the corners, or I can't see the corners, that's good. Okay, so now I want to make sure that I don't move my paper around while I'm tracing. I like to cheat a little bit and use some painter's tape to hold it in place. I don't actually tape it to the screen, but I press it on the paper and then I press it on the edge of my Chromebook. So that way I'm not getting the sticky stuff on my screen. Okay, now I'm going to increase the brightness on my Chromebook. That will allow me to see through that thick watercolor paper a lot better. So there's the uh, brightness button if you're not sure where it is. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and mark the thirds of my paper. The third lines are the white lines on your composition. 
So unlike what I'm doing here in this video, <laughs> you will want to have those lines go all the way down to the edge of your page. I accidentally only drew down to where my screen stopped, but I will go back and fix that eventually. <laughs> All right, so the beginner way of doing this is simply to do what I'm doing here, which is outlining all the contour lines, which are the edges of all those dark shapes. And you're going to need to um, shift your paper upwards and then also shift that picture up to complete the entire image. If you want to do a more um, advanced version of this, you can go ahead and just mark every three inches along the top and bottom edge of your paper. And then you'll connect the dots to give yourself a uh, that third mark grid. This is the, uh, the freehanders way of doing things. I personally don't love tracing on the Chromebook, so this is more my preferred method. I can figure out where those lines go. And then we can use those very cool, keen observation skills that we practiced in module three to fill in the rest. So there's my thirds grid. And actually, before I start drawing, I'm going to add extra lines. If you notice on your Canva composition, there are some red dotted lines. I'm going to go ahead and um, lightly sketch in where those lines are, too, on my page. Since I'm freehanding with this one, the extra guidelines will be really helpful. So this line just shows me the halfway point between the top and bottom of the page. So it's also just three inches from the top and bottom edges. And the last thing I want to do is also draw the halfway points for each of those thirds. So that's a one and a half inch, another one and a half inch from the pencil line another one and a half inch from that edge of the paper. And then I will make my one and a half inch marks across the top edge of the paper again. Okay, so once you have your grid set up, you can go ahead and start sketching in the outlines of those shapes using all of the guidelines that you have to help place things for accuracy. Do not make these shapes too detailed because some of your drawing will change along the way. And you just wanna have these rough light guidelines here. So sort of the intermediate way of setting up your page is to go ahead and trace just the most basic shapes and not to trace very detailed shapes. Um, so this is the product of me tracing on my Chromebook just basically where the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are. Okay, so I'm going to continue the next section of this project using my intermediate drawing, where I'm going to go ahead and fill in some more details. Um, I really want to focus on the center third, because this is the part that's going to be rendered realistically. I'm going to entirely use my pencil to shade in and add texture um, value to this part of the drawing. So one thing you can't tell from this video is I am constantly checking the Chromebook. I'm looking up at my picture, the original picture of the llama and pushing and pulling those values back and forth, making sure that if something um, is darker than a certain area, I push it darker and then I compare it to the things that are around it. The biggest tendency is for people to make the picture overall too gray, so be sure to leave some highlights, some really light areas, places too. And you remember light lights, dark darks, and some medium grays in between. Think about those value scales you did when we did module four. You want to have the whole range in your animal. You'll also want to pay close attention to the textures of your animal. So I am uh, checking out the hair in my llama's face and trying to make sure that the hairs are falling in the direction that I see in the picture. Hey everybody! We're going to go over how to abstractify the left side of your animal. 
So I have a couple different ways here that actually the king of abstraction, Picasso, did right here with this rooster drawing. So I have a reference of the realistic rooster on the right so you can kind of follow along and see what changes were made here. So the first thing you can do to abstract your animal is to simply play around with the colors. So you can still kind of like draw it mostly realistically, but then add some colors that just don't fit. Um, you can see that Picasso used quite a bit of color. Granted, roosters are already very colorful, but within each part of the rooster, there are some colors there that don't belong. So a good example would be like a panda. If you were drawing a black and white panda, maybe you would keep it primarily black and white, but add some accents of different colors that would be surprising. You can also change up your mark making technique. I really like this Picasso rooster because of the like the hatching that sort of follows the contour of the actual rooster. It's very different than the realistic rooster where um, the mark making is more true to the feathery texture. So maybe try out um, some of those different techniques we talked about in module four. You could try more like a stippling thing if you want. You can do some hatching and cross hatching. Um, you can also just simply use more of like a very free flowing mark making thing. This abstraction thing is all you guys. So you can, you know, if one of these things is more appealing than another, you just need to go with it. I think abstraction is for everybody. You just kind of need to find your route of how to, um, what makes you happy. Another thing you can do is simply take the very organic lines that are in your animal and change them into more geometric lines. So if you're looking at the tail, for instance, of this rooster, the rooster on the right has all these very detailed, you know, feathery, jig jaggedy lines, but Picasso just smooths everything down into these very elegant teardrop shapes and they're smooth. Um, there's not a lot of, you know, extra little parts of the feathers hanging off. The other thing you can do is make it look more flat, sort of like a cartoon. Um, again, Picasso did that here. There's black outlines that really help to flatten it out. Think about your favorite cartoon. It most likely is drawn with a heavy black outline. That's a good way to do it. So if you want to maybe outline things with a black Sharpie first and then color them in, you can do something like that. So you can pick and choose anything you want on the opposite. Any of these options that you have over here on the left side, if you want to do them all, great. If you just want to use one of these things, that's fine too. But you do need to kind of push it so it doesn't look exactly like your realistic animal. We are going to be using color, obviously. That's why you can play around with the colors. Um, and you'll be using your colored pencils for this left section. So I'll show you a time lapse of my own abstract rendering here. Okay, when you're looking at your composition so far, it should look like your animal. Very realistic in the center, but there's just this continuation on the left that still makes it look like your animal. It's just funky, if you will. So make sure before we move on that you have your abstract part um, filling up the entire third of your page. So I'm just going to go back over with some of this blue that kind of goes through the entire composition. Make sure that it goes right up to that edge. So it's nice and crisp. So now, the non-objective side. This side should not look like your animal. So what I'm going to do is sort of like I did with the abstract side, where I'm gonna simplify everything down 
But rather than just making it a geometric ref representation of what's already there, I'm going to make sure that it looks like just shapes. So for instance, this edge of the nose, I'm going to break down into just a plain geometric triangle. This edge of the mouth, even though it kind of curves up, I'm going to have it come straight over. And then I'm going to just have some lines here. I don't really have a whole lot going on in this part of my composition. There's just some fur. So I think I'm just going to break this down. I might use a ruler if I have one handy. Uh-huh. I'm just going to break this down into some really simple rectangles. At this point, whoops, I'm really just using my artistic license to kind of do what I want. As long as it doesn't look like a llama, I'm good. So there's that. Okay, the guy's eye is over here. The th important thing here though is we don't want it to look like an eye. So I'm actually going to flatten this out so it doesn't look like a round eye. And I'm going to make it a square. And I'm going to go ahead and take some artistic license and just have that go all the way to the edge like that there too. So you are making a purely abstract composition here. The only thing is that it, there should be some sort of reference as to where you put certain shapes. So I still have a square where there used to be an eye, but it doesn't look like an eye because it's just a square. Um, I have a triangle here for the nose. And then I'm still nervous that this still looks too much like an animal. So I'm going to go ahead and just have this line go all the way into these lines over here. Okay. And so then I'm going to have, I think I'll do some more diagonal lines across the top. Okay, so a good test is to cover up the rest of your animal picture. Look at the non-objective side you have left and say, does it look like anything? Mm, no, but I think I'm pretty good here. I think I'm just going to take a little more artistic license and break this down even more on the side. Okay, so yeah, now when I look at this, boom, that just looks like a minimalistic composition that looks nothing like an animal. But I can see how it is now derivative of the rest of my animal. And so that will be my final composition. On this side, however, though, we are going to fill it in with watercolor paint. Watercolor allows you to make things um, really fluid. You can blend a lot of colors. I think I'm going to stick with some of the colors I used over here, but maybe introduce a little bit of purple. So I go more into the purple and yellow instead of the blue and orange. That's just a personal choice. If you didn't want to make your non-objective picture um, really or I'm sorry, really geometric like this, you could go the complete opposite and make it really organic. Um, so rather than having all these harsh edge lines, you could just simply go right in with the paint if you wanted to. Uh, this is the part where you get to kind of break all the rules. So I'll do a time lapse so you can see um, how mine looks in the end.
Okay, so the last thing I need to do is just any touch-ups. As I've been working with this, some of my graphite from my realistic section has rubbed off. So I'm gonna go back in and darken in some of those really dark areas that need to stay dark. If you have any hairspray at home, you can actually lightly, very lightly, spray some hairspray on top of your pencil when you're done and it won't smudge as much. All right, so I'm gonna go through and just make sure some of my darker lines are still really dark. Get some of that contrast back in. I also wanna take a look at my photo too while I'm doing this, just for any last minute touch-ups. You might notice some things you didn't notice before. It's good to constantly reference that photo. I think that's about done. And then I'm gonna go back over to my watercolor side and touch up anything that I still want to. Um, when the watercolor's all dry, you can even go back over with a Sharpie over anything. If you want any thicker lines anywhere. So just use your artistic license and make things look however you want on this side. This should be one of the least stressful parts. <laughs> if you have a hair dryer at home, I know I use that to help speed up the drying process on my non-objective side here. Just zap it with a hairdryer, then it's a lot easier to be able to work on it in a timely fashion. All right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and keep making some touch-ups here, and I will show you the final result. As always, if you have any questions, just make sure that you email Ms. Brown or myself. And I hope you have fun deconstructing your animals this week. All right, so lastly, you just need to know how to submit your assignment. This will be very similar to how you submitted module nine. When you click on the assignment, this is what you will see. Please pay attention to the highlighted items, beginning with the fact that you're first going to be submitting two items. Obviously, the most important thing is for us to see uh, the picture of your project, but we would also like to see your animal photo grid composition that you made and downloaded from Canva. That was the picture that you were drawing from this whole time. So if you would attach that as well, it would be very helpful for us. So the, your rubric is broken down basically into the sections. The first five points you get are just for following all the directions of the assignment, beginning with how you um, composed your drawing, making sure that there was a part of your animal's face in each of the third sections. Then also attaching both of the files. You get a point for each of those. Make sure that you write your comment um, or your reflection in the comment section. Make sure that you use the correct materials in each section. Do all those things, you get a nice free five points. Then you get 15 points for each section. Your realistic drawing, you get five points for accurately drawing the features, which should be easy because you are allowed to trace those if you wish. Then you also get 10 points for your shading craftsmanship. Your abstract drawing is 15 points and that consists of five points for your level of abstraction, like the accurate level of abstraction, not taking it too far so you can't re recognize it, um, but then also making sure that it doesn't look exactly like your realistic part either. And then you get five points for craftsmanship, just basically using that good coloring technique that we taught you in module four, and also five points for creativity. Then in your non-objective painting, you get five points for craftsmanship, just, you know, overall thoughtfulness and neatness of that area. And then 10 points for creativity because you should be uber creative 
in that section. In the comment section, please remember to put your reflection. You should write um, about how this module went for you. How do you think your artwork turned out? What was your favorite section of the project? And did you choose the appropriate level of difficulty for each step? Explain those things for us. And then we will be marking this rubric for you when we return your work. So remember that when you go to attach these files, you have to click the blue submit assignment button first, which never makes sense, but you have to click that first um, and then select your files right there. So you'll attach both files, add your reflection in the comment section, and then click submit.